in a favor. Now we should read our story. Allah must receive the glory. Once in the great and gory city of Baghdad, there was a caliph, commander of the faithful and ruler of all Islam. The people of Baghdad loved their ruler, yet one thing mystified them. All who came before him were amazed by his timid knowledge of their daily lives. The caliph has thousands of eyes, muted some, glancing behind the first eyes. But the caliph's real secret was this. Each afternoon, he and his trusted vizier, Ali ben Manzar, would discuss themselves as Americans of a sweep through a hidden door in the palace wall. They then would roam the bazaars of the city, listening to the talk and gossip of the day. One afternoon, as the caliph and vizier made their way through the market, an old and wizened man threw one of the wares under the caliph's nose. What a marvelous snapbox! Look, Ali ben Manzar, see the intricate carving and drawing inlay. Peddler, what will you ask for it? Just one gold coin. The caliph gave him two and took the box and walked on. Reaching the edge of the city, Caliph and Wizir strode through the paths orchard beyond. At last they stopped to rest by a quiet way. I wonder if my new box holds any stuff. The Caliph opened the tiny box and found it filled with a fungal powder. But what is this? He pulled a piece of parchment from the underside of the lid. The user screamed to Nick to see. What does it say, glorious Lord? A sniff of snuff for ringed sword. Kasawai for hands once more. Why I believe the snuff is magic? He looked longly at the sky. I have always wanted to see my city from the air. Perhaps we should be cautious. What's the charm forced to change us back? If the snuff works, the shoe is magic world will too. Come, let us try our luck. He held out the box and each took a pitch of snuff. Then together they can hold the powder. A flurry of wings breaks at features and there in the place of the caliph and vizier stood two stars. Wonderful! The caliph said, stepping and thanking his beak. Of course, that is how storks talk. A human would have heard only. Kalab, Kalab, narrated. But since both of Caliph and Vizier were now birds, I think the Manzar understood perfectly. Kalab, Kalab, quite amazing. Kalab, Kalab, let us test our wings. The two storks rose into the air. Cycling higher and higher, spread to over meadows, ornamental gardens, orchards, and fields of crops. The river, the great river Tigris, falls slowly across the plain, through the canals along its land, and basking on the banks of the river was Baghdad, capital of all Islam, city of peace. Breathtaking, is it not? Come, let us fly over to the city. Soon they soared above the streets, canals, bridges, and clay brick buildings of the Baghdad. The country yard and bazaars, people brought and sold, fought and rested, fought and prayed, stole and chased, kissed and parted, laughed and wept. Truly, a stork knows more of the city than the caliph himself. As evening drew near, the vizier called, Glorious Lord, we had best return to palace. Back they flew to the lake and landed by the snuff box. 
the Caliph once more read the parchment, then cried, Kasawabair, and they stood to storks. Kawasair, 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 but storks they remind. I Ben Manzar, you try it. Kasawabair, Kasawabair, but no matter. No matter how they called and hoped and flapped their wings, nothing changed. At last they stood exhausted. It seems some enemy has worked us into the judgment. But what can we do? I know of nothing. Without the proper word to break the spell, we may never regain our true form. The sun dipped into the lake. As the stork stood, was in throne. Finally, the caliph said, Stork or not, my stomach arched for food. What are we to eat? Why, glorious Lord, we must eat what every stork eats fish and mice, frogs and turtles, snakes and eels, snails and slugs, worms and grubs. So the storks broke their breaks among rushes at the lake edge and into holes along the bank. When they had eaten as much as they could bear, each stood on one leg, crossed the other with the gates, hid his break among his priest fingers and slept. The next morning they did the snow box and flew to the palace. From high on the turret they watched the frantic scene within the palace walls. Soldiers, countries and servants rushed about in search of caliph and vizier. A certain storks knew too well was in vain. Look, or sword, a caravan approached. Through the streets of Baghdad came a magnificent procession of horsemen, camel riders and servants on foot as the heat row of horsemen in regal dress. By the, by the breed of the prophet, it's my brother Omar. He has long covered my throne. The caravan reached the gate and horsemen called to the guards. I am Omar, brother of Caliph. I have learned by secret means that the Caliph is missing and will not return. As true successor of Prophet Muhammad, I have come to take my brother's place as commander of the fearful ruler of all Islam. Do not open the gate. But all that was heard from the Caliph by the status people below was Kalab, Kalab. And when they looked up, all they see was two storks, one of them hopping madly, flapping its wings and clattering its beak. You see, even the storks welcome me. Open the gate. The gate opened, and Omar rose through and triumph. High on the turret, the caliph stood silent and still. Glorious Lord, we can do nothing here. Let us fly far away from the city. It's so that we may find the strength to bear our fate. 